Hey guys, today we are going to be reviewing functions and slopes. So let's start with identifying functions. So remember a function is where each input has exactly one output. So they do not have repeating X values. And for graphs, you will use the vertical line test to determine if it's a function or not. So we're gonna look at these representations and label them as function or not a function. Let's start with this graph. So we're gonna use the vertical line test. Remember, if it passes the vertical line test, it only hits the graph one at a time when you draw a vertical line through it. I can already see this one's going to fail because when I draw a vertical line, it is hitting the graph in two spots. So that would make this graph not a function. Okay, let's look at this mapping. Each of my inputs only has one output. So this mapping would be a function. It does not matter that we have um, arrows going to multiple outputs, like 10 has two inputs coming from it. What I care about is each of the input X values only has one output coming from it. Okay, let's look at this graph. If I draw vertical lines through it, it's only hitting the graph at one spot at a time. So this graph passes the vertical line test, which means it is a function. This mapping right here, right off the bat, zero has two outputs. It maps to 10 and it maps to 30. So that makes this not a function. Okay, then I have ordered pairs. I'm just gonna look at the X values. My X values are 1.5, 2.5, and 3.5. Those are all different. So this set of ordered pairs would be a function. And on my table, I can see that I have repeating X values, 0, 2, 0, 3 are the points. So this is not a function since I have those repeating X values. Okay, let's look at slope from graphs. So remember to find the slope from a graph, we'll count the rise over the run to get from one point to another. And there's four types of slopes. The most common are a positive line where it's increasing, a negative line where it's decreasing, zero line, or a zero slope where there is a horizontal line, and then your vertical line is an undefined slope. So on number one, I can tell that this is a positive slope and they've marked two points for me that are pretty far apart. I'm gonna see if I can find any other perfect points in between them if it's following that same pattern, which it looks like it is. So I can draw a slope triangle that's a little bit closer. If you wanted to use slope formulas with these ordered pairs, instead of drawing a slope triangle, you could, um, but I'm gonna draw a slope triangle. We could have done this really large slope triangle, but that's a lot of counting, which is why I chose to use two perfect points that were closer to each other. So there's my slope triangle and the rise is two and the run is three. So my slope is two thirds. Okay, number two, I notice right away that this is a negative slope. So I'm gonna go ahead and write down a negative sign so I don't forget that. And I'm gonna see if I go through any other perfect points, which it looks like I don't. So I either need to do slope formula between these two points or just draw a large slope triangle. I'm gonna draw a large slope triangle and I'm gonna count the rise, which is the vertical change. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, over the run, which is the horizontal change. One, two, three, four, five. So my slope is negative eight fifths. So that is slope from a graph. You can do rise over run. To find the slope, you can also do slope formula between two ordered pairs. So you would want to label your points x1, y1, x2, y2, and then plug into slope formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's look at this first table. I can use any points on the table 
you choose the points that are going to be easiest for you. I'm just going to choose the first two points and I'm going to label them as x1, y1, and x2 and y2. And now I'm going to plug into slope formula. I'm going to do y2 minus y1, so 7 minus 15, all over x2 minus x1, so 0 minus negative 5. And now I'm going to do the numerator and then the denominator separately. So 7 minus 15 is negative 8. 0 minus negative 15, you can type that into your calculator. It's 5. You also could have remembered that minus a negative is the same thing as plus a positive, And 0 plus um, 5 is 5. So our slope on this table is negative 8 fifths. Number four says Jess went to a coffee shop and bought a donut for herself, then coffee for herself and her employees. The table shows the total cost based on the number of coffees purchased. Based on the linear relationship shown in the table, what is the cost per coffee? So they didn't come out and say what is the slope, but they are asking for the cost per coffee. That keyword per, it's going to repeat. That's a big clue that it's going to be slope that we're finding. So I'm going to plug into slope formula. First thing I'm going to do is label points x1, y1, x2, y2. You can use any two points in the table. I just chose to use the first two. So to find the slope, I'll do y2 minus y1, which is 30 minus 12, all over x2 minus x1, so 6 minus 2. So 30 minus 12 is 18, and 6 minus 2 is 4. So to figure out the cost per coffee, I will do 18 divided by 4, and I get $4.50 per coffee. Okay, the last thing we're going to look at is slope as unit rate. That is when we start at the origin, and you just want to make sure that you are paying close attention to the scale of the graph here. So number five says the graph shows the rate that a golf cart is traveling in miles per hour. What is the rate of change of the graph? So since they're asking for rate of change, they're just asking for slope. So I'm going to do rise over run between two perfect points. So here's two perfect points. My rise, I go up two spaces, but I am counting by tens on my y-axis. So that's really 20 for the rise. And then my run, I go over one, two, three, four spaces, and it's just counting by one. So that is four. So the slope or the rate of change is 20 over four, which is Okay, and then the last question says a restaurant reported serving 400 customers in six hours. Create a graph that has a slope that represents the number of customers served per hour. Plot at least two points. So 400 customers in six hours. I'm going to go ahead and plot that. 400 customers is up here, six hours is right here. So that point would be right here. And it didn't say I had a starting fee, so that means I would start at the origin. So there would be your graph. Just draw your line between those two points.